Good evening, everyone. My name is Mandy Haplin. Um, I'm a candidate for Central Committee for Assembly District 77, and I'm on a slate with Sonar Vasquez, I'm sorry, Sonar Kidwell, and Danny Avicia. Um, I know this is Assembly District 78, but we all have friends that we know in um, the Coastal District. This year's Central Committee uh, race is a lot different than it has been in the past. Central Committee historically has consisted of community volunteers, not elected politicians. The role of Central Committee is to set up the rules, make the endorsements that our party follows. And so to me, having elected politicians running for Central Committee, it's creating a conflict of interest. And we need to keep this committee of volunteers, volunteers, not elected politicians. So I'd like to, again, just announce my candidacy. I'm a mom, an indigenous, my husband is a disabled combat veteran, and I'm a survivor of child marriage. And so I've been standing in line with my community and I wanna progress our communities forward. Again, being a coastal district, the coast is always in need of saving from overdevelopment, unsustainable environmental policies, and we need more transparency and accountability in our party. So please spread the word. I hope you all have a great night. Thank you. Thank you, Nelly. All right. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Andy McNew. Um, I know a lot of you. Um, I am running for Central Committee in Assembly District 75, which is East County. We don't really have the problem of having elected Democrats running for Central Committee because there aren't any elected Democrats at all. <laughs> and that is something that I wanna change. Um, I want to heal divisions that are currently happening in the, in the Democratic Party. And I wanna get back to our mission of electing good Democrats up and down the ballot because we've kind of lost that. Uh, over the, the last few years. And the other, my other uh, big issue is bringing rural representation to the Central Committee and making sure that the Democratic Party also represents our rural interests. Um, it's something that we have really failed on over the past decades. And uh, I am running with a slate of amazing rural leaders. Uh, Ross Pike, um, who is from Fallbrook on the North County Fire Protection District. <clears throat> Julie Diaz Martinez, who's a Latina activist um, working to register Latino voters up in Fall Rook and North County. Um, Amy Admire, who is a uh, represents the <laughs> tribal uh, reservation. She lives on the Rincon Reservation. She runs a nonprofit um, helping tribal youth. And um, and uh, Ryan Darcy, who is our uh, vice chair currently for the uh, East Area Caucus of the Democratic Party. So um, we really want to start working on getting Democrats out there in those rural areas, elected to local seats and building our bench. Thanks, 8075. Thank you. Hi, Kate Bishop, she her hers. Um, I'm excited to be here. I am running to be reelected for Chula Vista Elementary School Board. I was elected in 2020 and thank you so much to this club for your support during that time. I'm hoping that I can get your endorsement for this year as well. Um, since I've been elected, I have been a very strong voice on our board. I pushed for equity and support for all of our students. Um, I'm extremely proud of some of the things that have happened recently, and I want to share those with you. Um, I was one of the votes for our historic raises for our employees, 9% and another 3% coming in July. Um, that helps our employees support themselves and their, their families. Um, and that's one of the reasons that our classified union has endorsed me. Uh, I also have worked really hard for Black families in our district, uh, uplifting our students and giving them a, a bigger chance. Um, happy um, Black History Month this week, uh, this month, by the way, everybody. Um, and uh, the work that I've done in our Black community is one of the many reasons that the Martin Luther King Jr. Club has just unanimously endorsed me. I'm very proud of that one. And I'm a big voice for access and transparency and the community's voice. And that's a big reason that I just got 89% endorsement from East Lake Bonita um, Democratic Club. So I'm really proud of these endorsements. I hope I can secure your endorsement in the future to keep doing the tough work People are coming for our school boards. You've seen it. 
We need strong people on our school boards to defend our children, protecting our kids from these attacks. And I'm a big, strong voice in our district, and I really hope that I can get your support in the future. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kevin Juza. I'm running for Assembly District 75, which is East County. Um, I'm from Poway. I have a father of twin daughters that are wicked smart. I got a, my wife is, is a very patient fifth grade teacher. She's patient because she's married to me on top of fifth grade teacher. But um, I'm running because AD 75 has not been represented very well for decades. They've been represented by people that go to Sacramento for a paycheck and not really to do the work. Um, the current representative brought back one fire station for 3,200 square miles. Whoa. So 8075 is 3,200 square miles, one fire station, just over a mile and a half from our house. Her house, not my house, not your house, her house. So that probably helped her insurance. But what about everybody else's? We pay our taxes. We deserve to have representation that actually goes to Sacramento to do the work, to knock on the doors, to sit in the committees, to find ways to bring community money down to help us rise up. We have such great cities in 1875, from uh, Julian, Brago Springs, Santee, Poway, Balboa, Alpine, and they all need something to help that city just get better, that community to be stronger. What can we do to have an assembly member that actually goes there and listens to the needs and brings resources back. For example, in January, I went out there and visited uh, in, in Ramona, and they would love to add an aquatic pool there. And the school has a broken pool. This makes sense. One solution solves two, but three or four problems, because then it brings economy to the, school, to the city. When they, have, when they have needs, people come there, spend their money. It's ways to take so money from Sacramento to actually double down and increase our communities. My name is Kevin Chusa. Hopefully I've gotten some votes so far. If not, you got another 15 more days to go. Kevin Chusa, Assembly District 75. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Salt. I'm running for the San Diego County Board of Education in District 4, which is covers the North Inland area. So all the way up to Vallecito, Poway, Santee, all the way to Julian and Anza Borrego as well. So I was raised in the Rancho Peniskias neighborhood. I am a graduate of Mount Carmel High School. In Poway Unified School District, I had a lot of academic and extracurricular opportunities offered to me. However, after I started substitute teaching in JCCS, the Juvenile Court and Community Schools, which the San Diego County Board directly oversees, I realized that this wasn't the case for all students. I began teaching third grade in Oakland, California, where I was a member of the Oakland Education Association, California Teachers Association, and the National Education Association. In the 2018-19 school year, I had the opportunity to pick it during the 2018-19 school year um, and visit our state's capital, where I advocated for higher teacher salary, increased district funding, and increased oversight of our charter networks. Um, as a county board member, I'll make sure that our overlooked and underperforming school districts are receiving the services that they need to bolster student success. I believe that all students, no matter their backgrounds, deserve the right, deserve the opportunity to succeed in their local public school, uh, regardless of their zip code. As a county office oversees um, San Diego's K-12 school districts, it's vital a leader who has in the classroom experience is seated in this position. A teacher who's able to empathize with educators, administrators, and students, and knows firsthand the roadblocks teachers face day to day in the classrooms. With my energy, my leadership, and my experience, um, I'll be able to hit the ground running once elected. I believe that the bravest and the strongest thing a teacher can do for their students is to run for office. This is exactly why I decided to run. Months before the current board member decided not to run, chose, decided not to run for re-election. I was ready to challenge a sitting Republican in the seat, not because it would be an easy race, but because it was important that I advocated for my students. My time teaching in these classrooms and the relationships I've built with my students is my biggest motivating factor for running in this race. So thank you so much for your time. I'm Sarah Song for San Diego County Board of Education. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am Gina Jacobs, uh, born and raised here in San Diego. I'm running for San Diego County Board of Supervisors, District 2. In case you don't know what District 2 is, it changed to 2022. So now LA Gardens, Del Cerro, those areas are now in District 2, as well as others. 
So it's really kind of the eight and 15 corridor all the way east and then all the way north kind of goes up to a little bit of southern Escondido. So communities such as uh, Ranch Granado, Scripps Ranch, Poway, those areas are all in my district as well as east and Lakeside, El Cajon, Santee as well. So a um, couple things that I believe that I think you should all be aware of. One is that I believe that all the residents of San Diego County, specifically District 2, should have access to quality health care, right? Especially women's health care. And in that district, um, there aren't a lot of options, right? Just past Grossmont, that is the only major hospital in the East County in that area. And that's just not acceptable to you. Second, I believe that we should have a government that works for us. So uh, my opponent, Joel Anderson, voted was the one person on the County Board of Supervisors to vote no on the $10 million for flood, flood relief victims for the county, for those who really suffered. Only one to vote no, not acceptable. And finally, um, I really believe that we should all have access to, uh, we should have a wonderful, healthy environment to live in, our families to live in, parks to access and all of that. And um, I'm a huge proponent of all of that as well. So I am here because I believe in women's health, all of our health, we, I believe that we should have access to clean parks, air, water, all of that. And also a, a government that works for us and not against us and is in support of us. So Gina Jacobs, uh, San Diego County Board of Supervisors for District 2, um, look forward to answering any questions from you all. And my, I'm not in a primary, I'm in the general election, so I'm here to support all the others who are going in the primary for right now. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. Hi, I'm Allison Snow. I'm running for Lemon Grove uh, Mayor, and I'm also running for Central Committee in, in 8079. Um, why I'm running is why I do everything. Um, I'm a mom of five. Uh, it is a lot of work. I'm also a professor. Um, I'm also an attorney, and I'm also a current city council member. But my most important job is as a mom, because that's where the calling for to run even came from. Uh, I spent my last career really working to make sure that working families are able to make it in our economy. So I spent 13 years at the Legal Aid Society of San Diego. I started at San Diego's debt defense clinics that became national models. At those debt defense clinics, we helped empower people to be able to represent themselves in court, but with the tools that they needed. They went from a 5% success rate to a 95% success rate where it was coming off their trade lines on their credit reports. They were able to have a fresh start and they were able to move forward without being saddled with debt that just kept them in this cycle of struggle. And right now the struggle is extremely real and we need people in office who understand what working families are going through and then also how to get out of that spiral. And so that's what I bring to the table is years of experience, decades of experience, really working on policies that help working class families make it even in the toughest, toughest of economies. And that's what we're dealing with. Nowadays. And so I'm really excited to be here. Um, I am uh, right now I run the housing rights legal clinic at the University of San Diego Law School. Uh, housing is a top priority for me, making sure that people stay in their homes and that the people who are unhoused right now find uh, housing in the future. And so I have creative and innovative solutions for doing that. Um, we recently just got a mobile home park to agree to a moratorium on rent increases in their community and limiting them to a 5% increase instead of the 25% increase. And so we're really grateful for opportunities like that to transform Lemon Grove. So Allison Snow for Lemon Grove Mayor and Central Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Lovenbaugh and I'm running for Central Committee in the 78th AD. I am a community planning board member in Mission Valley, where I have stood up for our homeless neighbors, for safe parks, our San Diego River, a new nature center that will be opening there soon, as well as I'm also a longtime advocate and activist in San Diego politics. I've had the honor of working on campaigns from for everyone from Barbara Bree and Francine Busby to Shana Hazen and now Gina Jacobs. And I am doing this because I stand on the shoulders of heroines to me, such as Jerry Dilno, Gloria Johnson, Susie Dittmars, and, and Mitch Costanza. And I would be honored to be on the Central Committee and get a chance 
to help advocate for women and for our democratic values. Thank you. Wrapping it up, so we'll make it quick. My oh, gotcha. Wonderful. Okay, cool. My name is Jackson. I am not here for myself. I am Sarah Jacobs' campaign coordinator on the ground here in San Diego. Uh, we are just getting things uh, sort of spun up for the general election. The primary is not going to be too important, which is why we are here for you. So I want to know, uh, I want to meet everybody that's running. I want to know who we can help out uh, and really get into this, uh, some field work with here for the primary uh, and then going on for the general. Um, I know personally, when we get there, it's so important to me now that I get to be able to vote for Sarah. I grew up here, but I uh, moved away for 10 years. And when I left, uh, I was still, you know, we were represented by Duncan Hunter uh, and San Diego had a Republican mayor. And I came back and people like Sarah have been doing all the work in the meantime to make it a much better place when I return. So I'm hoping I'm able to contribute the same way for all of you and that we can get Sarah reelected in the fall. Uh, so nice to meet all of you. And uh, thanks so much. Thank you. All right, we have several candidates on Zoom with their hands up. So let's see who we should go to first. John? Francis, let's have you go first. Hey, hello. Uh, uh, hang on, uh, could everyone? Sorry, I'm celebrating my, my, my niece's 19th birthday, 18th birthday with my family. Sorry, I'm not with you guys in person. Uh, I. <laughs> So of course they're yelling at me now. Um, I am Francis. She her pronouns. I am running for the uh, central committee in the 79th assembly district. Uh, I decided to run um, because I am of the belief that we need more leaders in the Democratic Party who are not uh, bought off, taking corporate money, uh, not beholden to any special interests. Um, um, that are there to um, be fair and transparent. So I believe that I um, can do that. I want to help help make sure that the Democratic Party, our party, is living up to the standards that we should be, uh, that we are uh, right now speaking out um, in opposition to genocide. Um, I think that it's really important that we, uh, as a party, um, really listen to the public and and support uh policies that we can be proud of um so i will um well i guess besides running i'm a independent consultant with a consulting firm called winning and winning strategies uh, i have the opportunity and privilege of working with several nonprofit organizations uh and a candidate who you'll hear from soon uh, uh nurse brenda miller and uh, I'll leave it there. That's uh, is another 30 seconds of your life. <laughs> Thanks, so uh, Support Francis, 79. Thanks, bye. All right, thank you. Good evening, my name is Nadia Farjud, and tonight I'm sharing updates in three different capacities. The first is as a candidate, the second is as a commissioner, and the third is as a board member of California Women's List. So first, I'm running for the Grossmont Healthcare District in Zone 3 to build a healthier East County. I am a mom to a newborn son, a healthcare lawyer, and a community advocate. Our campaign has raised more than $65,000 from hundreds of donors, a record for this seat, and I'm grateful to have the endorsements of Congresswoman Jacobs, Senator Atkins, Assemblymember Ward, and Supervisor Montgomery Stepp. I'm also proud to have earned the endorsements of the San Diego County Young Democrats and Democrats for Equality, several labor unions and national and regional women's organizations. I'd be honored to earn your support. Second, I serve as a commissioner on the San Diego County Commission on the Status of Women and Girls. And on March 9th, in honor of Women's History Month, we're hosting our first ever Know Your Rights Symposium. This free event from 8.30 to 1 p.m. will take place at the Southeastern Livewell Center, brand new, uh, and will feature speakers uh, from legal services providers across the region who will address rights on the topics of employment, housing, healthcare, and immigration. And to register, I'll send the link to Kathy, but um, please go to the commission's website 
website and the event is supported by the California Commission on the Status of Women and Girls. So thanks to them. Uh, third, um, a, this is a report back. This club has generously supported last year, almost a year ago today, uh, a research study commissioned by California Women's List, an organization that elects pro-choice Democratic women in the state. The study uh, analyzed the hostility that women face on the campaign trail and thanks to the candidates who participated in that. Uh, the report included several recommendations, including from uh, Sen Senator Caroline Menjivar, and she has, because of uh, organizations like yours um, that invested in this study, she's bringing forward a bill, Senate Bill 1170, which would allow non-incumbent candidates to use campaign funds for campaign-related health care services, because um, the study found that for women, it's a lot harder, the emotional toll and mental health toll of running for office. So thank you for your support on that, and I'll send that report to Kathy so members can review that as well. Thank you. Happy President's Day. Hopefully one day we will be celebrating a woman in the White House. Brenda, Nurse Brenda Miller. Hello, hello, each and every one of you. Um, I go by Nurse Brenda Miller. I'm a registered nurse with over 40 years of nursing experience. I'm a lifelong learner, and I actually completed my doctorate of nursing at the University of San Diego. I'm a candidate for Grossmont Healthcare District Board of Directors, Zone 3. I've lived in San Diego County for over two decades in the healthcare and, and in the healthcare uh, sector as a practicing nurse. I am an educator at Cal State San Marcos teaching senior nursing students. And I'm also a clinical administrator at um, Poway, uh, it's Palomar Medical Center at Poway. And I've been a homeowner of La Mesa, beautiful La Mesa since 2016. And I did start at, at Grossmont Sharp Healthcare when I relocated to San Diego as a home health nurse working in the East County community. I'm running for Grossmont Healthcare Board of Director because I am committed, one, to improve healthcare equity to the uninsured and underserved communities in East County, to reduce the nursing shortage which is significant, I, I see it every day, through educational scholarships to address stewardship of public resources for the district and oversights and make sure that there's transparency and also to implement healthcare policies and support the Grossmont Healthcare District future growth for the hospital. I am uh, active in professional organizations such as the Association of California Nursing Leaders, Black Nurses Association, the Filipino Nurses Association, Sigma Theta Tau International Nursing Association, and I do have an upcoming trip planned in June to go to England to a, a major conference. I, do, I am involved, actively in, uh, involved in time. community organizations such as uh, Bay Pack and others. I'm Dr. Brenda Miller. I am a candidate for uh, Grossmont Healthcare District Board of Directors. I would love for you to elect a nurse, another nurse to the Board of Directors. Thanks. Great, thank you. All right, next we have Amber Kane. Good evening, everyone. Good to see you all. My apologies for not being there in person tonight, but I am literally pulled over on the side of Route 66 on my way home from my daughter's winter season track finale at Northern Arizona University. But all of that is important, but all of this is important too. So I'm here just to remind you and thank you again for your support as I run for AD 74 Central Committee. And I'm also running for Oceanside City Council District Seat Number 4. I am running to represent the community that has raised me where I graduated from high school, graduated from community college and have returned to community college to now teach. I have been in district four for 23 years. I didn't just move here as a political stepping stone, but I have been deeply embedded in this community my entire life in both activism and volunteer work and community service. I'm currently a member of the Sierra Club of the NAACP, African American Women's Association, Friends of El Corazon, a strong town's Oceanside, and uh, the finance director of the PTA for my children's school. I've been an eight-year active union member at my union at Maricosta Community College, where I'm a professor of sociology. I am a mother and will be the only mother on the Oceanside City Council when elected. Um, my daughter is 10 and my son is six, and they are a major reason why I'm doing this, to ensure that we have affordable housing as housing and homelessness, neighbors and neighborhoods 
and overall well-being are central to my campaign. I'm looking to ensure that we have affordable housing options across all income boards. I'm looking to ensure that we take care of the homeless solution in responsible and compassionate ways. I'm looking to ensure that we have neighborhoods that connect us intergenerationally and have been endorsed by our seniors of the Oak Tree Democrats. I'm also looking to ensure our well-being is enhanced with public safety through infrastructure and other means. My endorsements include Oak Tree Democrats, Blue Dream Democrats, uh, Deputy Pro Tem Mayor Katie Melendez, Karina Contreras, Mayor Sanchez, um, uh, Demco Club, and several others. I would also uh, like to invite you to my Kathy with a Candidate event. I will send the link to Kathy so she can send it out. Um, you all know me well, and you'll see me again soon. Amber K. all the way. Talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Amber. Alexis, you are next. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Dr. Alexis Savina. Uh, she, her, hers, and I'm sorry I'm not here with you this evening. I have a sick little baby at home, um, but I am proud to share that I am running for Chula Vista Elementary School District School Board seat four. I'm running for this office because I believe that every child, no matter who they are or where they're from, deserve to have access to high quality education from preschool to sixth grade and beyond. Qualifications matter, and I'm the only candidate for this race with decades of experience in education. I have spent 23 years of my, or the duration of my career in public health, specifically um, public health, human services, and education. I have my master's in public health and my doctoral degree in education and leadership, both from the University of Southern California. Throughout my life, I've been dedicated to breaking down barriers for underserved communities, expanding access to public health, human services, and education. By day, I champion early childhood education initiatives for a trusted community nonprofit. As a leader in education, I'm serving on the first five San Diego strategic planning group for the city of San Diego steering committee for the office of child and youth success and for the county of San Diego health and human services communities of excellence. In all three appointments, I'm advancing health, safety and education by collaborating with regional partners. I'm an effective and experienced nonprofit executive, community advocate, former college professor at SDSU, second generation Chula Vista resident, proud Latina and parent of two children, ages one and three. Some of my endorsements primarily in the region of South Bay are County of San Diego chairperson, Nora Vargas, former Chula Vista mayor, Mary Salas, three of the five current Chula Vista City Council members and two Chula Vista Elementary School Board members. I'm looking forward to getting to know you all better and hopefully securing this, this club's endorsement. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Anna. Hi there, Ken. Uh, everyone hear me? Yes. Awesome. Hi everyone, my name is Omar Hashimi and I'm a candidate for Oceanside City Council District 4. Growing up in a household with four sisters, I've always been an ally in the fight to empower women, and I will always stand up for women's rights, no matter what's at stake. A little bit about me, I'm married. Uh, my wife and I recently had uh, our first baby, a daughter, and she's a big part of the reason why I want to make Oceanside a better place. Um, as far as my experience, I'm dedicated to serving our country. I'm an officer in the United States Army Reserves, um, and I have an extensive 18-year background in housing uh, as a real estate portfolio manager, and I'm actually the only candidate with real housing experience. My expertise in real estate naturally positions housing and homelessness at the forefront of my campaign. My other uh, top priorities are small business growth as a small business owner uh, and public safety, along with climate stability. I've spent nearly two decades working with homeowners and renters in Oceanside, and I know what causes unaffordability, and we have a real big supply issue right now. Um, and I have real solutions to alleviating housing insecurities for our community. I've spent a lot of time volunteering at our local homeless shelters, and I have direct connections, and I see the faces of our unhoused community, and I know what's going to get them back on their feet. Um, I'm also a pro volunteer and a site captain with I Love a Clean San Diego, and I actively lead, lead cleanup efforts here in Oceanside. We just um, recently had a cleanup at uh, Ron Ortega Park where we picked up 23 pounds of trash, and over the last few months, we've picked up hundreds of pounds of trash. And I'm there. I'm at these events. I, I see what's going on. I'm very involved and invested in our community. As far as my campaign's progress, I mean, we're on fire. Uh, I have uh, the community behind me. We have been canvassing biweekly. 
We have been fundraising. I'm the front runner when it comes to fundraising by far. Uh, and I have the energy and momentum to win. Uh, our team is strong um, and we have a great network of volunteers to help us get to the finish line and help get a Democrat in the seat because that's what's most important right now. Uh, I'm endorsed by the Oceanside Democratic Club that's your time, Mama. Um, and, and I hope to earn your support. Thank you. All right, I think that's all of our candidates. We're going to move on to elected officials. Michelle, would you like to go first? Well, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Cruz, Region 22 Director, your Regional Director. I just wanted to make sure that I'm reminding people that if you have any interest in being a delegate to the National Convention, um, the DNC, uh, which is going to be happening in, in August in Chicago, that you go to the kadem.org website, and it's very obvious where you click the link, sign the application, you only have till March 21st. So um, just if you're interested at all in running on the district level, and then there's two other levels, the um, at-large and the uh, um, CLEOs, the uh, party leaders, elected officials. So um, those you have a little bit longer to apply. Anyway, just a reminder, if you're interested and if you want more details, I'm happy to give it to you afterwards. And I'm telling everybody that March 5th is the last day to vote, not that that's election day. Thanks. Right. Thank you, Michelle. We have Doug Chase on Zoom. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, good evening. Sorry, I can't join you in person, but my car is in the shop for a very expensive a transmission uh, rebuild. And I wasn't able to join you last month because of a conflict. And I'm sure that everybody is aware by now uh, that uh, the Senate pre President Pro Tem Emeritus is now a candidate for governor. If elected, she would become the first uh, woman governor in California's history and the first LGBT LGBTQ person uh, elected to that office. Uh, she is the uh, only person in 150 years to have served as both the uh, Speaker of the Assembly and as pro tem of the Senate. And in that capacity, she uh, helped negotiate uh, eight on-time balanced budgets and has become an expert in all aspects of uh, policy that affects Californians. Um, you may have seen uh, that uh, the uh, California Dream for All program, which I've mentioned in the past, uh, relaunched recently. That is a program that is a shared uh, uh, appreciation uh loan program for first time home buyers and the way that it works is that the state will put up uh, up to up to 20% of the cost of the home uh, to be used for a down payment or for closing cost up to $150,000 and then that money is repaid uh, to the state uh, when the home is sold uh, with uh, a portion of the appreciation and then that goes back into a revolving fund to help other first time home buyers uh, last year uh, $300 million is allocated and it was uh, exhausted within 11 days. There will be $220,000 this year and they have changed the program so that you must not only be a first time home buyer, uh, but it's uh, set aside for uh, first generation home buyers, meaning that your parents didn't own a home either or that you grew up in the foster care system. And it'll be done via a lottery system to make sure there's equity throughout the state. And so I will put in the, the chat a link uh, for people who are interested in more information about the program and hopefully you can send that out with your minutes. Thank you. Thank you. And with everybody who has mentioned a link, I will be sending that out with the minutes so you can have all that great information in the follow-up email that we do send out um, later this week. All right. Um, you know, I am going to skip the activity because I want to make sure to get to the rest of our agenda and we'll move it to the end. But right now, I would like to introduce Angela DeJoseph. She is the founder of Women of Color Roar Media. And I would love for Angela to tell us about the hugely successful breakfast that she organized earlier this month. Go ahead, Angela. Well, good evening. And um Happy birthday again, Kathy. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> um, I wanted to say that, um, first of all, I always have to say thank you to the Democratic Women's Club for being uh, the the very first sponsor of, of uh, the Women of Color Roar event. 
And uh, and this year, again, you all stepped up and came through. And I, I really appreciate it. Not only does the Democratic Women Club um, donate the funds, but also uh, you all roll up your sleeves and, and help with it. So, you know, so thank you to to Kathy and Hannah and John and, and Susan and, and all the other members that came out to help us. And um, most of you, I'm sure, heard about the floods over in Southeast San Diego and the Jacob Center, where we always have our event, was completely flooded and um, they canceled all of the events. And this was, we were just about, it was about uh, two weeks before the event. And I found out probably maybe, you know, about seven or eight days um, before our event that we had no place to have it. And I was determined that we had to go forward. We had to find another place because first of all, we have all those students um, that are coming. And thanks to uh, Yvonne Elkin, who um, works as the coordinator of our, our students. We have all these students that are looking forward to the event. We also had an unbelievable lineup of, of speakers that were coming and we had to juggle all the schedules. So um, I literally uh, went out to uh, San Diego City College that Monday um, this is the Monday before the event was supposed to be on Saturday, and I saw it that day. And and then on Wednesday, we made the arrangements. And within three days, we were able to put together an event in their gym. And and those of you that were there, and I see a lot of you on here tonight that were there. And thank you so much for coming out. And and if you were there, just raise your hand. Make some noise right now if you if you were there at Women of Color Roar. Let me see who you, yes. It's a, it's, I know it was, we had um, a sellout crowd for, for the Jacob Center. When we were in the gym, we actually had some more room, but we had to bring in everything cause it was a gym. So we had to rent the tables. We had to rent the stage and all of this had to be done in a 24 hour period because there was a basketball game the night before. So the tables couldn't come in till that night. The The next morning at 6 a.m., the stage had to be brought in and put together and the doors were opening at seven o'clock. So it was like, you know, Mission Impossible music in the background um, of of all the things that had to, to happen. And um, so I just want to say, it, and it was a phenomenal event. But um, for those of you who didn't get a chance to come, I was going to say up on our website, which is, womenofcolorroar.com that we we will I'm actually putting pictures up now but we have um we actually have a video and we have um the program book and it was just a, a just a phenomenal event uh Barbara Lee was was being honored but we had in the house obviously our secretary of state who always you know just blows the roof off when she speaks but we had so many powerful women that were there Mia Bonta, who is an assembly member uh, from Northern California, she came down, she spoke. We had uh, our chair, Nora Vargas spoke. Uh, our new supervisor, Monica Montgomery spoke. We had um, in the house, we had uh, our Congress people. We had Juan Vargas. We had Scott, uh, Scott Peters and Mike Levin, both were sponsors. Sarah Jacobs was there. She came up to the stage. She was one of our sponsors and has also been uh, from the beginning. But there were so many um, amazing moments and all the students to see their faces. And they came up to me afterward and they were just telling me the, how exciting it was for them to be there. They had never been in a room like that. So from the youngest person to uh, the oldest person came up to me and said that in his whole life that he lived in San Diego, he had never been in a room with that many powerful black women before. And so when we started Women of Color Roar, we wanted to create something to celebrate, you know, black women elected officials and encourage young women of color to run for office. And I felt like this was our sixth year and there it was laid out, despite, you know, what we had to go through to make it happen. All of it was there before us. And I, I just want to say that, you know, it would it would have cost us an extra fifteen thousand dollars to make this move. But the uh, president of San Diego City College, uh, Ricky Shabazz, he waived a lot of the costs for us. And then he also paid for uh, half of it for the tables 
for us. We still ended up having an additional seven thousand um, dollars that it cost us in for this move. I mean, I think it was an important decision for us to go ahead and have it and not cancel the event. But that's something that we uh, we do want to try to make up those funds because that means it's less programming and money we have for programming that we plan this year. And and as you, I told you all before, we started the Leadership Academy uh, in the fall, and we want to continue with uh, two more Leadership Academies this year. And we also want to provide funds and resources. In, in addition to uh, internships, we want to also be in a position to give scholarships to uh, to young women. And so, uh, so I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm just really happy and, 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 uh, and just grateful and appreciative of everybody that rallied together to, to make Women of Color Roar happen this year. And, and I just say, thank you. There we go. Sorry, I lost my mic, Angela. I just want to say thank you because your tremendous leadership enabled the whole thing to happen. And working with you is just an honor and a pleasure. So thank you. All right. Oh. Angela, you're being asked to talk about the Rafiki circle. The Rafiki circle. Okay, Rafiki means friend in Swahili, and and circle because you know it. There are people that have means and there are people that don't. But one thing we all can do, I found out, is we can all contribute in some in some way, even if it's a small way. And so this year we launched the Rafiki Circle for people who wanted to make a monthly donation that would help us with our ongoing cost and help us with, with our programming. And so from the smallest amount that you could afford a month to whatever, you know, maybe your company wants to match a donation for you, but we've started it and uh, we have, we actually have it up on the, on the website where you can go there and you can sign up to become a monthly donor. And, and that helps us again to reduce, you know, some of the cost hold that we're in, but also to help us to, uh, to pay for things going forward. Sorry, my, my mic is just all right. We've got more questions for Angela. Make sure you're checking the chat, Angela. There's a lot of in the chat for you. Okay. Yeah, I'm just in uh, comment for Angela, but uh, this club was the very first winner to uh, women of color war. It's quite a story someday I'll tell it to you. Um, but we can't make up the seven thousand. It also involves Sarah Jane uh, Jacob. So I just saw her first turn around. Um, we can't make up the seven thousand dollars, but I would like to make a motion that this club um, donate an additional five hundred dollars to Women of Color Roy to help make up the seven thousand dollars difference. All right, it's moved to second that the club donate additional five hundred dollars. Does it make a motion? You will have any more to say? I think uh, it's a I think it's a, a very worthwhile move for us to support. Um, and it it is um exactly the time that I just get more room. Thank you so much. All right, so we move to second. All in favor. Any opposed? All right, hello. Five dollars time your way. Oh, thank you all so much, and and thank everyone for your comments in the chat, and and uh, I do I, I appreciate uh, and and thank you all too for for stopping by the the vendors because you know we we try to get um, some black women from the community and help them to to be able to be introduced, and it's great when you all you know shop with them, and then also. Uh, people were buying uh, the the scarves that we have. The Shiro scarves uh, were going like hotcakes. So, so uh, thank you all so much. Have a good night. Thank you, Angela. Yes, those scarves. Everyone had a scarf. I think we all want one. So they're they're wonderful. 
Okay, next on the agenda, we have Andy Hoffman. Andy's going to give us an update on the legislation of the Prohibition of a Child with Marriage. And this is brand new legislation that just happened this week. Thank you, Kathy. Um, again, I want to double down on the Women of Color Party back. It's my first year today. And um, I really, I already signed up to volunteer next year. I really encourage everyone to attend. It's very spiritual program. I felt like I'm in church almost. So, uh, again, to our member, Kathy, and uh, friends, John and Susan, for really supporting that event as volunteers. Um, and I want to thank this club. Back in October, you hosted me. I was able to share my story. Um, I'm a survivor of child marriage. I know a lot of you, when you hear that, are shocked, like child marriage in the United States of America. Well, I've got some good news. Assembly Bill 2924 was just introduced by Kati Petrie Norris out of Orange County. Um, it was co-authored by several uh, assembly members, one of them being Chris Ward, and Senators Catherine Blake Spear to be noted and uh, thanked. Um, this is a long time coming. Currently, you can get married in the state of California um, as a child, and there's no age limit uh, or age drop, as they call it. Um, the current standards, you go before a judge, um, you go through the motions, and they determine if you're eligible to be married or not. Um, and so it is such a privilege to talk um, and see this realized. Um, having gone through this experience, um, the impact that it's had on my life in the past, present, you know, and the future, to be able to abolish this archaic practice and allow California to be the leaders when it comes to uh, protecting women and children, especially with regards to marriage. So the assembly bill is 2924. Um, I have an ask. I have a, a form letter and I'm gonna send it on to Kathy. Um, it's to Kata Hutri Norris. You can amend it as you feel um, inspired, but we need all hands on deck contact your assembly member, contact your senators. We need people to show up for women and children. This is an archaic practice, it's still happening, and we need all the help we can get. So um, I forwarded all this information on to Kathy, um, if you would so kindly distribute it to the, the club members um, and take the time to write Kata Petrie Norris and show your support for Assembly Bill 2924. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you for your work. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Let's see if we have some questions. Um, do you know where? Oh, do you know um, right now, like where it is in the process? Like, which policy committee is it going before first? Because maybe we can also help in those days, in those ways, by calling in when it's getting to a particular committee or even calling the committee members. It, it just got introduced on the 15th. So we're in the very beginning phases of this. As far as what committees, I've never entered an assembly bill or been part of that. Um, does it go to committee? I don't, I, I'm happy to talk to you. It's in rules, rules. okay. It's still in rules. It's it in awesome, well, I really do appreciate this club for giving me the space to share my story back in October and to be part of the change to stop this practice and the solution to keep others from experiencing this traumatic experience. So thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we are. Now comes the time. One year ago tonight, I was elected president and wow, that year really flew by, but we are about to do our officer elections for tonight. We serve for a two year term. And so half of the officers are elected every uh, every, every year. So my term's two years, I'll be up for election next year. Um, but outgoing officers, I just wanna give my gratitude to Dr. Tiffany Boyd Hodgson. She doesn't happen to be on the Zoom, does she? Uh, she served as our external vice president and uh, Ann Crosby as director of communications. I would like to thank both of these women for their volunteerism and their service to the club. And now it is time to elect. Thank you. Yeah, let's hear it for a minute. I'm going to introduce our nominating committee chair, and that's Patricia Wadowski. 
Oops. And uh, Patricia is going to talk about our two candidates that um, the committee would like to put forward. Good away, Patricia. Thank you. We have uh, two offices uh, that we need to vote on tonight. Uh, one is for external vice president, and we have one applicant for that. Uh, that's graciously Susan Pinato, uh, who is founding uh, chair of, of our club and served as vice president, uh, served as president uh, during the nominating, uh, during, I'm sorry, during uh, COVID and got us through that. Um, she's always been active in the club, very supportive, always a source of positive energy. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about these people. Yeah, just uh, one yeah. little one correction. She was president up until COVID. Up until so COVID. Been, yeah. Okay, yeah, I remember on on uh, on uh, Zoom. Yes, um, just we only had so Zoom. And, Zoom at the beginning, right? And then LaWanda was after that. Correct. But uh, always a source of positive energy. Um, she offered her home for a Christmas party. Uh, so uh, the nominating committee is nominating Susan. Uh, are there any additional nominations from the floor? No. So. <laughs> Susan, oh my God. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, we can have a, a voice vote then. Um, all in favor of Susan uh, Panato as external VP, say aye. Aye. Oh, aye. We should, we need, I'm sorry, we need, okay. Our, on the agenda, we need so we That's our nomination. Sorry, um, Russ, I knew it is. So all in favor of Susan? That's correct. No, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, people, if you have attended two meetings in the last 12 months, you are eligible to vote for this office. If you have not, okay. If you have not, then you will not be able to vote. Before we move on, we're going to get a couple of things on Zoom. Timothy, you're first. Is this concerning the election? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were voting. Oh, oh sorry. He was raising his hand to vote. Anybody else? Okay, great. We're good. All right. So we were, um, Pat had said we have one nominee. Right. All in favor of. If you are a voting member, meaning you have been to two meetings in the last 12 months and your dues are paid. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. <laughs> okay, also, uh, for treasurer, uh, Beatrice Cubitt has graciously um, volunteered to continue. Um, I'm going to say a couple things behind about Beatrice. I have worked with Beatrice. She is extremely intelligent. She is so helpful to me. I have no idea what I was doing and still don't uh, managing Excel and the vegan responsibilities that are on my lap, but uh, Beatrice is fantastic and has saved my neck a number of times. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and she is our soul, uh, also our soul, uh, volunteer for this uh, position for the next two years, correct? Uh, so do we have any nominations from the floor? Okay. Uh, so it's going to say rules apply. Uh, anyone who has uh, admitted for two, session, uh, two meetings running this one in the last year is eligible to vote for an officer. Okay. So, if you may, uh, all in favor of Beatrice Cupid, uh, say aye. Raise aye. Okay. And aye. any opposition? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Okay. Beatrice, that's it. <laughs> so, the record 
show and help for you and a few paths for doing and updating. Great job here, it's so important. And something I do in the nominating chair is time, effort, and you appreciate you should do that. One thing that we need more than anything else this time is someone to be the endorsement chair. If you have time, you are inclined, please. We need a volunteer to do that job. It's such an important mission. And oh, I'm people to see the name all in favor. My goodness. So, man, I got my exception. All right. So, he has uh, agreed to be not mentioned here. And I would like to say all in favor of any of you that share, say aye, raise your stick, open the door. Anyone go? Put that in the hand. And we have this our family garden chair. And the bottom that we hope is that you transition. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So that's a great thing. Thank you so much. Don't, don't know what it means to us when someone steps forward to, to take on the responsibilities. It's really, really important and we're grateful. Okay, so this is our budget vote. It's our we're a pre our budget for this year. So our treasurer, who was re-elected, Beatrice Cubit, is going to bring up our budget and we're gonna go through real quick and then we're going to hopefully approve it. Okay. I'm just going to run through this really quickly. It's um it's quite easy to, to go through. This year starting we had about four thousand seven hundred and seventy four dollars. That's our starting balance. We've had new member oh, new membership renewals. And as of the end of January, we had about 2,300 in new, in new, well, current members and new members that had joined the club. Um, there was probably about 72 members that were sort of waiting, are they going to come back? Is Trump going to scare them enough to come back? Are they going to come up, join us, and join us in supporting some of the candidates? And so I've made an estimate of projected future income. And even tonight, we've had four new members that have signed up and we're looking good. So I anticipate that we'll have a good um, cash on hand balance. Any club will have certain, certain fixed expenditures. So I've listed those. Those are just the sort of the basic expenditures you need to run a club, Zoom, uh, there could be state fees to run the club, personal service. And then we have a few things that we have to do as a club. One of that is to attend the, or to, have, to have a table at the San Diego Democratic Party Roosevelt dinner. This is an annual event in July, which is a $1,500 table fee and that's that's an opportunity for board members and also members to to come along to the to that event and meet some of the politicians have a nice time a couple of glasses of wine if you, if you can line up that long but it's a, a great event well a couple of things that i'd like to have as fixed fixed events for this year and future years without having to come to the to each meeting or to meetings to get approval is obviously the women of color war breakfast we had a table which we voted for in january we voted for that but we would like to pay for our table earlier on we don't want to have to ask angela each time can you wait till we get the vote so that we can have a table please hold one table for us and she's turning other people away so what we'd like to do is make the women of color war is really important. 
for our club to continue the support of that. So I'd like to, us to vote on having a table at, the, at that event as a fixed cost. Let's go every year. And if board members can't go or want to purchase tickets themselves, I want to see some of the members say, I'd like to go. So that's, and the other thing is I, was fortunate enough to, to go to the Alliance San Diego table for the Martin Luther King breakfast. And that was quite a, a rousing and inspiring event. And $248, that's really great value. Uh, again, that's a place where if you got there early enough and you found a public spot area, you could see the politicians and talk to some of the politicians. And if you got there late, the call was okay. <laughs> But again, that's an opportunity for the membership to, to come to those events too. And the last aspect of the proposed big edition, I'd like to have a, a budget. I put $700 for the budget for the, for the club holiday party, which will be in December each year. And this year we have some great donations from one of Susan. By the campaign, music, really good music, live edition. Um, I had other nation the club did some food, but I like that because it, um, I think it's the end of the year. We should all try to get together and celebrate success we've had for the club, celebrate the endorsements, celebrate hope Trump goes to jail. But, I will buy the champagne this time. I buy the champagne. Mr. Trump and the jail by the end of the year. But anyway, I have a sense of humor, but I, I do um, and I do hope you will agree that we should have a few traditions and uh, uh, any discussion? With your presentation, I love the treasurer. I you very much. Uh, I just had a question about the uh, income for 2023. I think that there's about five dollars. But we have a high start number in 2023. Were we looking to spend more than we got in, or we just going down the line? It's kind of worked out that way. Um, I think the woman's list has a list. That's an unexpected, but a very valid thing to support to try and help your female patients with candidates. I honestly don't know if you're able to contribute. I would have to make $1,000 for that to study for women. That's it. So uh, Nadia is on board of the California Women's List. She uh, spoke about it earlier in her whole study. And uh, I think about her time back in the complete uh, report. But yeah, she said there's legislation pending to do it. So the women candidates use probably the campaign funds for mental health. I'm not sure, like, because remember the legislation that in the general election, the candidates vote on to support. So, do we have funds put aside for that? Yeah, that's always something that we want to do is support the candidates that we endorse. However, because um, election laws are fussy about giving money to candidates, we've had we found that to be really problematic. So. We have to find more creative ways of doing it. We have to do it on our own without colluding with the campaign. Um, no, you can't just give a candidate. Yeah, you have to be a path. Do we have money set aside for? Um, I think what the what the idea would be would be to have certain. What we did a few years ago was to actually organize or, or to. Ask our membership, okay, Monica Montgomery 
needs people to go, we need people on the ground, we need people to go deliver leaflets, talk to people in, in those districts. Right. Yeah, there, are ways, there are ways to support with, that don't involve money, such as holding fundraisers and things like that. One of the things that you guys might not be aware that we did is all the buttons that you saw, uh, Monica Montgomery buttons, uh, those were made by this club. So that's one thing we can do. Uh, we have a button machine, we can supplies for that. We can do things like that that are creative. Um, it's, <laughs> yes. You can't donate that. Right. And, and one thing that we'd like to do, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, but what we'd like to do is to is to have have one of the candidates come in and teach us how to do text banking or phone banking because yep. Sure, I can use a computer, I can mess around with an Excel spreadsheet, but the idea of text banking completely terrifies me. But if someone came in and showed me, I would do it. And I would do it for other candidates too. So we should try and get... Yeah, we can do that. Once we get through the candidates. After, once we get through the primary and we have some endorsed candidates for the general, that's something we definitely want to do as a working meeting. My question is, do you need a motion to adopt the fixed expenses into the budget? Or no, it's on the agenda, so we just have to have a vote. Any more discussion? Or can Beatrice call a vote? Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, uh, those. Oh. Are you sure that those we, that we both the events to keep it wide up here over here? Did you have any for any event? Can you repeat the statement? Yes, sorry. Um, so you guys have that it's $1,500 for the Women of Color Warm Breakfast, 248 for the MLK Breakfast. I'm sorry, 248 for what? The Alliance Line San Diego table. table. The, it was the model of the King Breakfast down. The all people's breakfast. It's not a money. My question is, most of these events there's an increase over year, just through normal events. But I mean, you can put that in to the budget and make sure that it's we can, we can um, just, just yeah, the 1500, I would say, the 1500 was based on the last year, the Roosevelt and that. Right. So, well, but it's kind of a fine road map. We're not bound to exactly what's, what's on the budget. It's helps guide us. So we need to spend it in another place and shift things around we are able to do that with the time. And I'm not sure if fees are very suitable. It's, uh, it's what people would want to do. donate to the So we need to do things when we get uh, quite a few people coming in. They don't have a lot of. Um, and then next week we'll get five people that just have a lot of money to make. We still have about seven people that have our food, and people, you know, well over the big range. So um, we're confident that our offers will be more full. We have some on that would like to speak, right? Um, I sorry you guys, but your the mic is cutting out, and it's like we're getting every other word. I don't know if it's my uh, phone or if someone or if the online is having difficult following, but it's kind of like choppy, and I, I'm ha I'm really having a, a challenge knowing what we're moving towards um, voting for. I don't oh, know if we can approve the mic. Can you hear me now, Doctor it's cutting out. It's 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 like you're underwater. Can you hear me now, Doctor? Mm. Hear me now. Still doing the same thing. I'm sorry. So what we're doing now is we're going to approve budget that Chris had just for, and we will now ask for any objection to the budget that be just for. Any questions on Zoom? Is the audio okay? All right, seeing no objections, 
be a budget process for 2024. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much for everything you do. Really appreciate it. Okay. Let's Kathy, I'm on. sorry, but maybe somebody could just type in a summary of what's being said so us online can kind of get a gist of what we're voting for. Okay. I'm just going to type in. Maybe that will help. Thanks. Uh, we turn our votes, Captain, so you should be able to read. Uh, next up, we have our outgoing endorsement share. <laughs> The endorsement committee chair by default, committee of one. So Yvonne's going to talk about um, last week or last month, we took a vote um, ranking the races that we were planning to endorse. And she's going to talk about that. All right. So we took a vote. In the January meeting, we provided you all with a list of all of the races in San Diego County, and you kind of ranked yours for the dim. And these are the top 10. So the most critical race, kind of a tie, was between the San Diego County Board of Supervisors District 3 and the San Diego County City Attorney. Uh, the next most critical you said was the mayor, then San Diego City Council D3, then Senate District 39, Assembly District 79, uh, San Diego City Council D4, La Mesa City Council, Oceanside City Council D4, and Congressional District 49. So what we agreed, just so everybody here could be up to date, <clears throat> it's not that these are the only races that we could endorse it. So Mandy, when she takes over, could go through a different kind of endorsement process. This one is for the 10, or well, actually probably the top six that the, that the Democratic Women's Club is going to invest themselves in. In the last two cycles, when I was chair, uh, in the 2021, 2022 cycle, we endorsed in 40 races. In the 2019, 2020 cycle, we endorsed in about 30, 35 races. What we gave those candidates was the, you know, the chance to use our logo and say we endorsed them. And that's all. And so as a committee over the last couple of cycles, we thought it would really be nice if we could support candidates with more than just our logo. If we could really get behind some of these candidates. But the only way we could do that is limit the number. We could not definitely get behind 40 candidates. So these were the ones that we voted for. Uh, the plan is, <laughs> excuse me, that we will wait now until the vote on March 5th. Uh, we will find out who <clears> of <throat> the Democrats who moves forward into the general election. And then so, so this county will supervise deeply. It doesn't have to go through a primary because there's only two candidates. That is an incumbent Democrat. So we could go ahead and just endorse her through the friendly incumbent kind of practice. Uh, but say the matter, we could add with two Democrats come through. And we could start one of two things. We could say, okay. The same seat that the press will win and move on. Or we could actually have an enforcement process to enforce one of those two candidates. Um, let me think of what the other option would be if a Democrat, only one Democrat, moves through to the, uh, to the general, but they're not in it. We would then process that through. Using our normal process, they fill out the questionnaire, we would put on the ball on that. But there would be one candidate who would be. So, again, we'll probably focus on supervisors three, city attorney, mayor, city council D3, and uh, Senate District 39, and California Senate District. Again, 
for the executive chair Brett Simon, the property president. So that was our plan for this year, partially because we wanted to be more relevant in these campaigns, partially because we had any that would be because she can vote too. She asked to come to District 2 is not there. And that's why I said, okay. And, and the reason is because the motion did left. Um, did it. That's it. So um, I have, I don't have everything. But I have the top 10. So the process that we use is, you know, because I do want to talk about school boards. Right. I will talk about school boards. <laughs> okay. Um, but so Board of Supervisors, District 3, received 103, I'm going to call them points. San Diego City Attorney received 103 uh, points. Mayor, 97 points. Uh, City Council District 3, 85 points. Senate District 39, 82 points. Assembly District 79, 80 points. City Council 34, 79 points. La Mesa City Council, 77 points. Oceanside, D4, 76 points. And Congressional District 49, 75 points. And then everything else was less. You know, and, and, you know, I mean, we asked the membership to vote. That is the membership vote, and that's what we're going to accept because it is the will of our membership. All right, so. Yes. And, and in, in all reality, that's the congressional district that is most, most vulnerable. Remember, Yvonne said that these are not only the races we can endorse in, these are the ones that we're going to invest in. Invest in. That means we could in, endorse in right. you know, all the congressional races, but the ones that were voted higher on the list will be the ones that get our investment. Right, and that Mandy and I'll have some kind of a conversation between now and next month. Yes. And we'll have a plan of a committee of two. <laughs> <laughs> I'll join yeah. that committee. Oh, then a committee of three. Yeah. Well, let me Just a quick question. Are you guys thinking about potentially prioritizing these based on those who are in the primary and are, are not in the primary? No. Just, I'm just thinking out loud for resources for those who have the most need. We're not even there, we're not even doing anything for the primary. Okay. So we won't decide truly who is endorsed. Until after the primary. We just did the judges, the two judicial yeah. seats. So if someone falls off that race or, or falls off that list or whatever happens. Well, if we, yeah, I mean, I, I suppose if we had one of those seats where two Republicans went through. Right. Well, I'm, I mean, I, obviously that could happen. Well, that could happen, obviously, in some races. But even, but what if, like, someone gets a huge, like, comes out of the primary with a huge, huge vote lead, and it's clear that the endorsement doesn't do anything to help. Now, can you look at putting that off the list? We're going to put the people the membership to make the sign. Because it's not the choice of the board or the endorsement, it is the choice of the membership. So that will also be a change in that endorsement. I Matt, I mean, you must talk to Matt. <laughs> There's some magic. Oh, Matt, Because now we have more members. I know. Well, because now we'll see the consequences of being involved on the endorsement committee. <laughs> All right, so the other thing I wanted to talk about really briefly is that we did not include school board races in this list. And the reason that we did not is at least in my opinion, every school board race is important. 
So I proposed and I don't have a plan yet an answer to it. You know, Kate, if you want to help with that, you can do that. But we need to figure out a plan where the Democrat room is going to stand together how in school board races where that particular board majority is in you know, kind of like your adoptable. Okay, but look, I don't have that all work out in my mind. I just think we should do this. <laughs> we have to be San Diego Democratic Education Alliance. We would love to partner with you to uh, really do deep dives in the work. So we're going to be uh, endorsing every school board race in the county. That's only thing we endorse in. Um, and so if there's a time that we can work together to uh, support the board candidates that we both agree on, um, we're we have to. All right. Then, pretty well, I'll follow up here. Right, you've got her. Stephanie Well. And then for, uh, okay, and then talked about, okay, so now I actually do have a candidate's uh, campaign people that are willing to come in and train us, and that's from Tara's office, because when she was at my house today, I said, we can't ask you anything, but we're going to do something. <laughs> Right. So after the endorsement process, I think would be a good time to have someone from. Right. So she has offered to come in and do a training. Um, and also we can talk a little bit offline about she's up giving me ideas of where we can go to do independent expenditures. Okay, great. Because we've got something we're interested in. Okay, thank you, Yvonne. Appreciate your work as well. And thank you, Mandy, for stepping up, and Stephanie, and Michelle, and who else said there was? Michelle and Michelle. Awesome, Michelle. Thank you so much. As you, as everybody now is discovering, it's really important to be involved in these decisions, and that way, you know, you feel good about the direction that we're going. All right, we're going to move on to unfinished or new business. Seeing none, we'll move on to officer reports. We've already heard from almost all the officers today. Uh, for my report, I want to quickly thank our tech team. We've had kind of a rough night, but I want to thank John, and Hannah, and Susan for the work that you and um, to make the hybrid meeting possible. And I would like to encourage everyone to download our DWC app. You can look for it on your Android App Store or your Apple App Store, DWC. Let's hear from our treasurer one more time to give us our bank balance. Okay, um, the last amount that I told you was, <clears throat> uh, let's see, or whatever. Forget that. So since since I did the budget, we have had more members join, and our balance at the moment is five thousand six hundred thirty one dollars. So we are looking in a nice sweet spot to take some beer. And so our membership director, we've got Patricia. Well, we have seventy nine members uh, now. Uh, we have a pretty number of people who are inactive and interested, but we have our seventy nine members very active here. Uh, uh, proud of them and happy uh, online efforts to keep up our membership and recruit new members this is greatly appreciated. My pleasure. All right. Our next president, Andrea, do you have a report tonight? No, nothing from you. Um, Yvonne, anything from you? Hannah, secretary, any report from you? Our brand new external vice president, Susan Donato. 
Welcome back to the e -boys. You guys are wondering what the balloons are for? Yeah, what is the balloon? It's Kathy's birthday. Happy oh, birthday, Kathy. Thank you so much. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. That was Thank you so much. I appreciate it. The song, the balloons, every bit of it. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, awesome. So let's see. Have I hit all the officers? I think I did. Awesome. Is Angela still on? I guess she had to give her report. And Elise had a meeting tonight. So, all right. That brings us to announcements. Is Timothy Bailash still on? He's had his hand up. Hi. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Two minutes. Oh, hi. Not much to say. Thanks for the meeting. I just wanted to reiterate the uh, women of color breakfast. I was uh, uh, not the first time I've gone, and I just astonished the number of people, but the diversity of the people that were there and the uh, extreme effort to make it a great event. So... And I just want to remind people to vote in the primary. Um, I like the endorsements that you picked, and uh, I am working towards a single payer health care system. The state is moving in that direction. There are bumps, but it's one of the things I think a lot of people are agreeing on. So I raise that as an issue to support the state, Mike McGuire. Uh, there's a new, uh, I think it's SB 2200. I haven't completely read the bill. But uh, there has to be a bridge from the federal government to the state, and that's what I'm trying to push right now. So thanks for your time. Thanks for the meeting and your effort. Thank you, Dr. Bayer. All right. More announcements? Anybody? I already talked about the mayoral forum that's coming up on Thursday night at the Croft Theater, 630, since you mentioned it. Um, since you mentioned it, actually, uh, I would I would encourage any and all of you to um, get involved in our adopt a district program through the San Diego Democratic Education Alliance. If there is a nearby school district that you are um, willing to kind of keep an eye on, look at the agenda. Let us know if there's something coming up that we need to organize around, um, or if you are willing to just receive notifications if there's something coming up so that you can write in on email or maybe even show up if there's something big that we should get a lot of people in the room for. We would appreciate your participation. You can go to demedalliance.org um, to sign up for that. And again, any, any help is fantastic. And it is so important as a school board member, it is so important to have people in the room supporting our school board members in the tough decisions that we're having to make and to support our kids. Thanks so much. What's the website one more time? Dem Ed Alliance, D E N E D A L L I A N C E dot org. Thanks, guys. Would you be able to ping us and let us know if there's one of those meetings so that we could like maybe send out a special email? Well, if you if you want to sign the Dem uh, Democratic Women's Club email up for the uh, action alerts, you'll get them. I will do that. Okay. Hey, Lemon, um, also the Pride does a really great job of providing resources and information regarding the school board challenges. Uh, you know, there's a couple of districts here, like the uh, LSD, having a lot of challenges there, and our friends work as many other educators there. So I agree 100%. We need to support the effort. So have to anyway, I can as well. Thank you. Wow. Lori, has an announcement? Oh, Kathy? It's Elise. Elise. Go ahead, Elise. Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. Ahead. Hi. Yes, I'm sorry to interrupt you. 
Uh, I just returned from our Monday meeting that they had with the Jackie Robinson Y about the flood victims. And the great news is that FEMA is finally coming in. They should be coming in this week. And when FEMA comes, then money comes. So everybody was really excited about that. And I wanted to share that with the Democratic Women's Club that FEMA is going to be here, which means we have been designated as a disaster, which we are. And let you all know that Thank I'm here. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for recording that, Tess. We appreciate She's it. She's doing okay, Wendy. I just okay. talked to her. Um, I just wanted to say that there's a number of forums coming up, and if people can add to this, I would love that. But the one I know of is in my neighborhood in Paradise Hills this uh, Wednesday. Um, at St. Timothy's Church. It's part of our normal um, neighborhood meeting, neighborhood village council. So it's at 6 p.m. on Rio Drive at St. Timothy's Church. I know there's another one at Porter Elementary School on Saturday, February 24th at um, 6 p.m. And I believe it's just, a, uh, not just, but it's a mayoral one. It's not the city council one that I'm really paying attention to. And um, uh, I think that's all I can think of right now. There were like three of them last week. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Lori? Yeah. Uh, I spoke earlier about Genevieve Jones Wright running for mayor. Um, also, Colleen Cusack is running for City Council District 3 and was, uh, she's been to these meetings in the past, but they have a forum going on tonight, and she was endorsed by the Union Tribune uh, over the incumbent for City Council District 3. Um, and I also want to make sure people know, uh, Kathy is running for Central Committee. She's been to a lot of about that. Uh, she and I are running for the 70th assembly district. Uh, Mandy is running for the 77th district. Is there anyone else here running for a uh, central committee? Elizabeth, you're running for the 70th assembly district. What district? Okay. 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 So we have several women who are running. And it was mentioned by Nadia, I believe, about challenges that women face when we run for office. And unfortunately, this is happening once again. Um, Colleen Cusack, on the day that was announced that she was endorsed by the Union Tribune, a member of the San Diego Democratic Party Central Committee, started posting on social media some really horrible, negative, uh, insulting, disparaging remarks. We who are on Central Committee know that there are code of conduct rules against that. And uh, they are not enforced as strictly as they need to be. And I wanted to ask if we could schedule something at a future meeting to discuss this as women who are supporting other women running for office, when that type of disparaging comment gets posted, there needs to be a strong and unified response. Um, some of us can file complaints, but I think it needs to be more than just a complaint that might get buried in the process within the central committee. Otherwise that behavior continues and escalates and it's even worse when it comes from somebody who is a, a Democrat within the Central Committee, as in this case. So just something to bring forward. But again, raise your hands if you're running for Central Committee and make sure you look for names and faces if they're on slates to support our members. Um, and again, I'm Lori Saldana, 78th Assembly District Chair. Also on Zoom, we've got Stephanie Wells is running in 77. And Elise Pickton Allen is running in, in 79. Yay! And Angela, um, go ahead and give a report. Hi there. I I wanted to to say something um, to the Democratic Women's Club. Um, you know, there's a black woman that's running for Senate, and her name is Barbara Lee. And <laughs> if Barbara Lee, <laughs> and I want and I want to say it's really not just about Barbara. It's also about black women, black girls, because there will be no black women in the Senate if she's not able to, to compete. And right now, you know, we talk about getting money out of politics and, and, you know, Adam Schiff and, you know, I like Adam Schiff, but I also know that he has 
multi, multi millions of dollars coming in from out of state. And, and it's not, and it's out of balance because when one person has multi million dollars coming from, you know, big donors and out of state donors, and they can buy all the television commercials, it throws the race out of balance. So who Barbara Lee is and what she's about doesn't get out. So I want to say to you, and I've had an opportunity to get to know her, you know, this year, particularly. I mean, I knew her, who she was, but I've really gotten a chance to know her. And she is really the real deal. She is authentic. She's strong. She's smart. She will make the right decisions. She will stand up for us. And I just want to encourage any of you to help us get the word out to vote for Barbara Lee. And because she doesn't have the big donors and the big dollars, but you know what she does? She does have the backbone and she has the integrity and she is the woman that we need and representation matters. Thank you. And I think she has a lot of support in this room. Thank you, Angela, for bringing that to our attention. Did you have your hand up, Susan? No. Oh. Uh, Oh. 6 30 on thursday at the craft theater all right i think we have reached them um you actually need to be a member anybody else i do want to mention sarah robertson is also running for central committee and i don't know if we wants to put out a list of we did we decided all right yeah cheryl robinson Thank you so much. And uh, seeing that we have reached the end of our agenda, I would call the meeting adjourned. Thank you so much and have a great night.